pick up where we left off yesterday and do the remainder of the exercises on the tracking progress tool. So the first one we're going to do is exercise five, um, and that's using Excel uh, export and import to add and modify data. <clears throat> so I will switch to the tool and go through the, the steps and, uh, and then you can do it. So just wait, and then you uh, you can do it yourselves after that. Yes. Ah, is everybody still logged in? <clears throat> Good. Um, just raise your hand if you need some help logging in, because I know most of you are logged in with our temporary users, and Nashib will come assist you. I forget the phone. Okay, so uh, we'll use this export button and I'll say current grid as Excel. It'll ask me to save it. And then I can open it in Excel. Okay, and now you can see in a slightly different format, but all the information that was in my data entry grid. And so what I'll do is I'll add, I'll change some of the existing information so you can see what that looks like. So I'll change this 100 to 200, make this 200. And then I'll add some new data where there's none. So in my custom sector, I'll add values. And just a reminder, the it's just like the data entry grid, the white areas outside of the column rows and headers are where I want to put my data. The gray and the green are telling me places this is where I should not put information, right? The, the green are the calculated ones and those will get recalculated upon import. And let me just put some invalid data in here also so we can see how the system handles that. So I'll, I'll put a letter here, an invalid notation key, put a, valid notation key here. <clears throat> and then I save the file. I'll go back to the tool. And the one the one thing to remember is the, the import is not over where the export is. You need to go to this options menu in the navigation tree, import the file. And I can either drag and drop, or I can use select to get a normal dialog. I'll pick the file and I'll import. So now I'm in what's called preview mode, draft mode. Uh, so you can see it says data sync is paused, right? It says draft mode over here. And what it's done is it's showing me the data that it's imported, but it hasn't saved it yet. So I can choose whether or not to accept this new information. Um, so you can see the my change data, that 200s that I put here. There's the information I added for that custom sector. And here's that notation key. Uh, but you'll see where I put the invalid data under waste didn't come in. And so you'll note over here is where I can see the log file. It'll tell me information about how it processed that data. So if I click on this, it'll download it. I can open that. And so here is what it's telling me. So it saved that 200 for year 2025. That was the first one. But here's the error message. Cannot import value for year 2025. This is just the system's very long unique identifier for the field where it belonged. And this is the reason is any number. So that field was expecting any number. What I gave it, right, was text. And so it rejected that. And then you can see it saved the values for these other ones where I put correct data. And, and the key here, it says import partially successful, right? So it, so it doesn't fail the import if I have one piece of bad data. It just ignores the bad data. Uh, and imports the rest, but it does let me know that that's what happened. So let's go back. 
And the key is I need to remember to either cancel or save. So cancel, I'll discard the changes. Save, I'll keep that data. It says updating changes. All data has been updated. So I'm back, fully synchronized and done. So that's the extent of this exercise. We'll pause now and uh, you can all try it yourselves. And just a reminder, the step-by-step -step instructions are in the your download of the presentation, the, the exercise guide. Okay, I hope everyone's had enough time to complete that exercise. We'll move on to exercise six. So in exercise six, we're gonna add some information for policies and measures. And I will show you on the tool. And then again, you will proceed on your own. So I'll go to the 2.1 policies and measures area. And to create a new one, I hit the plus sign. I give it a name. and then add new. And then you can see it's created it over here in the grid. And now to add the information, I need to click on it. And now I have the data entry form for all the information about that policy. So I will say it's included in the with measures scenario. Hopefully you all can give it a better description than I do. I can hit this plus sign to add some additional information. This will all be appended to the description in the reporting table. Um, objectives. All right, all the information, but what I'd like you to do, um, fill it all in, of course. But when you get to the implementing entity one, I'd like you to use this custom name and give it the name of an entity in your country uh, that might administer that might administer a mitigation program program. So something like right, Ministry of Transport. Oop, I think it didn't add it. Now the one thing everybody needs to be aware of, you need to hit the add button not the apply before the apply selection. So hit add, it will create it, add it to your list. It will select it and then you can hit apply selection and now it's showing up. Okay, and so fill out the information in this form. And then the other thing I'd like you to do is add a custom footnote. So I'll add it to the year, for example. I'll pop up the custom footnotes. And I'll say, um, let's see, partially implemented in 2005. And then also, uh, please leave a note, a user comment. Oops. Remember, you need to hit save here. <laughs> Um, and then you can leave a note for someone else in your party to add a comment. This is, you know, please double check. <clears throat> um, and then you can see I now have a triangle here showing me that those notes exist. And so if I click on this and I go back, I can see that information that I added, All right? So you'll create a policy you will fill out the information in the field, create a custom entry, and finally create some user comments and footnotes. Okay, and then this is all in your exercise guide. Remember it's uh, exercise six. Hopefully everyone has had a chance to complete that. And if you haven't, there'll still be a little bit of time left at the end, I think. So exercise seven uh, is going to be the NDC related information on your targets and indicators. And so you can see this is a pretty extensive exercise, but it's the last 
exercise, really. The last one is just generating the reporting tables, which will be quick. So um, you'll have the rest of our, most of the rest of the next half hour to work on this one. And I will now show you the steps and then you can follow along after uh, doing it yourself in the exercise guide. So you'll be working in the first area, the structured summary area. And you'll need to create a target first. So hit this plus sign and we'll use this first target. If you have extra time, you can work on another target after you do the first one. And you can see it's created it here, but then I need to expand it to see more information. And now I need to create it. Oh, sorry. First, let me enter the information about the target. So I need to give it a description. So we'll say 5% production levels by 2030. So that's just the um, description. And so now my target year is 2030. My target level, let's see, is gonna be 95. My base year is 2010. All right. Okay, and so now I need to create an indicator. So I hit that plus sign. And now I need to give it information about the indicator. So we'll say uh, economy-wide emissions. And I won't fill in the rest of this. You'll fill in the rest of this and the information's in the, um, in the exercise guide. But if I expand this, I can see some more information. So here is the important tracking progress area. And you should give numbers for the indicator. So this, in this case, is emissions. So let's make this one 98, 97. So that is, again, my indicator is my emissions. And this is showing what the emissions are for these two years in which I'm tracking progress. And then I need to go to the progress made. And this is where I give my description of progress to date. So we could say, Emissions decreasing 1% per year on track to meet target before 2030. Okay, anything you want there. So that's uh, the tracking progress, creating your target and indicator, tracking progress. And then the other places you'll go are the definitions. All right, and so you can add a definition, say, pick one of these, and then you type the information in here. There's the methodologies and accounting approaches. Um, again, you could just type some information in here. The information is in your exercise guide. And then finally, the NDC. And so this one I'll ask you to do a little differently. If you're familiar with your own country's NDC, try the best you can to enter that information um, in here. I think this, this one's pretty straightforward and this table looks almost exactly like the one that's in the NDC that you've submitted. Um, so if you have that information or you know some of it, go ahead and try to enter it in um, this way. That's the last one, the NDC. All right, so that's it. I know that's a lot, but we've got almost a half hour to work on it. So uh, we're here to help with any questions you have. All right, I'm sorry to have to interrupt everyone. I, I see you're all making very good progress on this, but we are just about out of time on the session. And uh, we do wanna make sure we give time for a little break before the next session starts. So the very last thing exercise, which you I will show you and you don't need to do, or you can do on your own later, uh, is to just generate the reporting tables. And so let me show you how that's done. And you can do it yourselves after the break if you'd like. Uh, so you go to the reporting tables tab, and then you'll see a list of all the tables. And then you'll also see a list of descriptions. You'll, you'll notice most of these uh, descriptions match things that were in the navigation tree. So you'll see that's where the information came from. 
And the easiest thing is to just check them all because it only generates one Excel file, uh, no matter how many you select. And then download as Excel X, SX. All right, it generates that very quickly. And here is the file. So the first sheet is an index sheet, which just tells you what all the others, but then each one is just labeled with the table number. They're not all 100% working right now. So some of the information might not come through, but there you can see some of the things that I've typed. All right, I have my mitigation policy, my projections numbers that we did earlier. Okay, so um, that's this is what will become uh, your submission with once with all the data in it. Uh, and you, when you generate this, you'll see the data you've entered so far today uh, will all be in there.